Praise the Lord. Yeah, keep smiling all the time because we are studying the Word of God. We are on Psalm 119. And we finished four parts of the Psalm. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4. We come to Part 5 now. And we are only at verse 24. Got a long way to go. A long way. Yeah, praise the Lord. <clears throat> so we'll go from verses 25 onwards now. This is Part 5. So it says here in verse 25, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. My soul clings to the dust means sometimes we feel that we are depressed, we are fallen. And the dust means right low down. We need to be revived, be lifted up by the word of God. And we need encouragement. We need somebody to say something good about us because we are down there. It says, my soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. The, the word of God again revived me. Many times we misuse the word revive. We have revival meetings to revive the church, to revive the people. But actually what is the meaning of revival? Revival means there was something burning. There was some fire burning. And for some reason it has gone cold, not gone out, gone cold, gone dim. So when we put another couple of more pieces of wood in, again it comes up. So that is the reviving. If there is no fire, there is nothing to revive. So the truth, when the, the church that is teaching the truth, they have revival. The church without the truth is just other formalities. There is nothing to revive. There is no fire burning. There's no fire on the altar. So revive me means the fire is burning. The believer's heart should burn with fire. And that fire for some reason becomes dim. It may be trouble, it may be sorrows, it may be sickness. It may be the death of a loved one. Our, our spirit becomes low, dim. And then we, when we come to the word of God, the word of God revives us. Praise the Lord. That is why we have revival speakers coming. They speak to us from the word of God to revive us. So the fire that had gone dim starts burning brightly again. That is revive. So that is what it says over here. Revive me according to your word, not to, according to the way man thinks. He says, I have declared my way, my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So I shall meditate on your wondrous works. It says, I have declared my ways to you and you answered me. That means open way. That means an open, open traffic between God and you. There's no stoppage. There's no break. There is no uh, uh, bumpers in between. It's, the road is clear. So when I make my way clear before the Lord, then I'm revived, I'm, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. That is what he says here. I have declared my ways to you. You answered me. Teach me your statutes. Teach me your word. I told my weakness. I told you what I am. And when I tell you, you teach me through your word and you revive me. You lift me up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Teach me your statutes now, he says. Make me understand the way of your precepts. That means of your way. So shall I meditate on your wondrous works. Make me to understand your ways. What is the Lord wanting in my life? What does the Lord want of me? There are many things that we want. But does God want that for me? You know, each one of us are uniquely made. We are not like some factory. You know, the stool and the camera, the mobile, the stand and all these things. Even the Bible also, the printing. They have a format and they keep printing that and millions of copies keep coming out. That is called a mold. God did not make us in a mold. We are uniquely made. Every person, that is why David says in the Psalms, I am wonderfully, wonderfully made of God. His fingers formed my inward parts and my mother's belly. What is he saying? That means the finger of God not only made Adam on that first day, 
But even now, while you were in your mother's womb and I was there, it was the finger of God that was putting our paths together. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, don't you thank the Lord that your hand, your eyes, your nose, your ears is in the right place, not out of place. Don't you thank the Lord? That is what David says. How beautifully and wonderfully I am made. Hallelujah. That is the way of God. That is the way that God has been making us. It says here, I shall meditate on your wondrous works, the works of God. Actually, if you want to see the works of God, you can see it anywhere. You look at an ordinary tree, the work of God. You look at a beautiful flower. We admire flowers, most of us, all of us like flowers. So when you look at a beautiful rose, the smell, the fragrance, what, what are you looking at? What are you looking at in that flower? It is the signature of God. When you look at your beautiful child, right now as you're hearing the word of God, if you have your child nearby, just look into the face of your child. What do you see there? Looking like mommy, looking like daddy. No, it is the signature of your God on that face of your child. That is what makes your child so beautiful, so loving to you, so affectionate to you, because God has made the child for you. That uniquely made for you. Tailor-made. You can say tailor-made, not ready-made. Tailor-made. Tailor-made for you, for your family. So that is the works of God that we need to meditate on. How God did that. How God did this. It is not that, that mold system. Yes, lakhs and lakhs are just moldable. No, you're special. I am special. Hallelujah. What you can do, I cannot do. What I can do, you cannot do. We have our own separate ways. He says, I, I shall meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Yeah. When we have heaviness of heart and spirit, it, like our soul is melting, like what the psalmist says, uh, we can understand a little bit what he's trying to say. With heaviness, when things go wrong, even falling into sin is a heaviness. It does not give us peace. It... Uh, it upsets our conscience. We are troubled. So it says here, melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Run back to the word of God. I remember a program we used to have on the radio. In our days we had radio. Back to the Bible program. You must have heard that. Back to the Bible. And that is correct. When we feel heaviness in our hearts and our souls, and when we feel depressed and down, run to the word. Back to the Bible. Go back to the Bible. When you go to the Bible, it is the only place you will find peace and solace for your soul. The only place. Hallelujah. It says, my soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Hallelujah. 29 verse, remove from me the ways of lying and grant to me your law graciously. Yeah. The way of lying. Yeah. That is very common. You know. Sometimes they say white lies and black lies and blue lies. A lie is a lie. A lie is a lie. So whether it's white or black, it doesn't matter. A lie is a lie. So the psalmist says, keep me from the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. Come to the next verse. Verse 30, it says here, I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. O Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. I have chosen the way of truth, not of lie. Jesus is the truth. When you choose the way of truth, means you choose Jesus. And every other lying thing is covered up. When you say a lie, you have to say another lie and another lie to cover up that lie. But when you have the truth, you don't have to think what you said. I remember some great man said, when you speak the truth, you don't have to think what you spoke. Praise the Lord. Because it is the truth, it ha does not have any other color. It has one color. But when you speak the lie, you have to think, what I said last time. What I spoke last time and I'm going to talk again means I shouldn't be contradicting myself. But the truth is the truth. Hallelujah. So thank God for the word, the way of truth. I have chosen the way of truth. We make a determination. We choose. We need to choose right or wrong. God says, do not choose that tree. Do not eat from that tree. What does it say? God has given us the free will to choose right and wrong. Choose the right way and live. 
In another part, it says in the book of Deuteronomy, choose life and live. Why you want to choose death? Why you want to choose death? Choose life and live. And it says over here, your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies. O Lord, do not put me to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments and you shall enlarge my heart. That is verse 32, 31 and 32. It says over here, I will cling to your testimony means I will cling to your word. I will cling to your word means I will cling to Jesus, who is the word. Hallelujah. When I cling to Jesus, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So when Jesus is with me, I am strong. <coughs> Some, when you're going on the road and if you're holding, when you were young and you were holding your daddy's hand, there was nothing that you feared on the road. Because you knew whose hand you were holding. And when you fight with somebody older than you in the school also, in the class, I'll tell my daddy, yes, there is somebody who we have confidence with. And you should have Jesus for your confidence. When you're holding Jesus' hand and walking, you have nothing to fear. It's a stronghold. Hallelujah. Do not put me to shame, for you shall enlarge my heart. Hallelujah. Enlarge my heart means to accommodate all that God has for me. Don't be limited. Don't be shrunk down. Don't be small. Become big. Hallelujah. In the sight of God, we need to be have a big heart. And when we have a big heart, God is able to fill us. Hallelujah. He's able to fill us. I'll just say a little story and stop. I'll, a gentleman took a little child of his and went just about four years old, five years old child, and went to the shop to buy some, some things. And while he was buying, the child was looking at the bottle of sweets. A little child, about four or five years. And the shopman was a very kind man. So the shopman says, you want chocolate? And so he opened the bottle and he offered the child. The child would not take. The child would not take. So after refusing some, some time, the shop man put his hand in and he took out and he gave the child. So when he was coming out of the shop, the daddy asked him, you want a chocolate? He says, yes. Why didn't you take? So daddy, my hand is so small. Shop man's hand is big. So if I take, I'll take few. But if he gives him give lots. <laughs> you laugh about it as a simple story, but so much truth in it. Why not allow God to give you instead of grabbing Sometimes we grab other people's things also. Don't grab. Let Allow God to give you. His hands are big. Hallelujah. We start, stop here with part 5. God bless you. Psalm 119. We stop at verse 32. God bless you.